Ladies and gentlemen, start your robots. We're here in Pomona, California for the long-awaited DARPA Robotics Challenge. DARPA is the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, which is sort of the blue sky research wing of the Pentagon. They have a multi-year robot contest. Teams from around the world are competing to get to hear the finals, which is where each team is going to have to do a series of tasks, really any sort of task that you wouldn't want a human performing. So that's the end goal of these robots, is to be able to send them into an environment where you don't want humans to go. So like a nuclear reactor shut down, that's sort of thing. This is the finals. There's something like 20 teams competing today. Let's go check it out. Welcome to the DARPA Robotics Challenge. I'm Arasi Prabhakar, the director of DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. So the dystopian signage game on lock here at DARPA Challenge. Aggressive, but very subtle signage all over the place. Join us in imagining the future and may the best robot win. I don't know if it's that way or this way. It feels sort of like a state fair 50 years in the future. It almost smelled like livestock, but then there's like robots everywhere. It's a strange mix of the two. It's trippy. But the real action is inside the stadium. Teams have an hour to navigate DARPA's course. They're awarded points for completing various tasks along the way, and they can also bypass any task of their choosing. First, a team drives its robot in a car down a dirt track. The robot then must exit the vehicle, open a door, walk through the door, rotate a valve, drill a mark out of a plaster wall, pull down a lever, walk over a pile of debris, and finally, walk up a small staircase. So we've made it inside, and you can see right behind me there's a, a bipedal robot. It looks like it's about to walk over some uneven terrain. The robot fell. Its journey came to an end. And now they're about to hoist it back up and haul its ass out of here. So DARPA is purposefully messing with uh, their communications channels to see how these things do in conditions where communications might be knocked down. So it really isn't about speed, it's just about completing the task. So this is Florian behind me. It's one of the uh, bipedal robots that we hung out with at Virginia Tech a couple months ago. This is the Atlas robot that was developed by Boston Dynamics. This robot was developed specifically for the DARPA Robotics Challenge. There are about seven of these in the world, uh, distributed to a number of teams competing, developing their own software to operate the robot and control it. So to this point, they had to drive Florian way out from uh, across the field, had to open a door, turn this lever here, and now it's on to this shaft challenge. And it looks like it's making some movement. Let's see how it does. It also seems the phrase of choice here today is do something. I've heard multiple people just screaming, do something. Uh, apparently that's it. I don't really know what happened, but um, looks like they're going to wheel them out. Must have been something, obviously, with the communication. It just could not, uh, could not get going again, so poor guy. As day one draws to a close, we head over to the garage where all of the competing teams can take a breather and work on their robots between runs. We're hoping to check in with Team Valor, another Virginia Tech robot team that we met while filming our documentary, In Humankind. The center of the lab here is the robot Escher. So we've actually fabricated this robot here, and we have people working on the mechanical side, how to build the robot, 
as well as the software side, helping the robot see the, the world in front of it. How'd it go today? Can you just tell us about um, some uh, of the issues? Yeah, yeah there were some network issues. It started off the day really rocky, and so when we got out to the field, some of the network comms that DARPA had set up made it a little uh, tough for us to get connected. We did resolve that, so I think tomorrow we'll be all set. We've got the robot up and walking again. Yeah. And so we're, we're in good shape. So you're bypassing the car? Yes. So okay. it makes it easier. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's, uh, that's a crazy the thing. We walked more than any other robot in this competition today. Yeah. And we could still... And we got zero points. Yeah. So that's unfortunate. Damn. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you. Cool. Yeah. See you guys. Done. Day one, done. It's the second and final day of competition and our two Virginia Tech teams are hoping to make it farther down the course and higher up in the overall standings. Once again, Team Valor's bipedal robot, Escher, walks the preliminary stretch instead of driving, and Escher nails it. But it stalls shortly after, while trying to open up the door. Florian, the bipedal robot from Team Vigor, meets a similar fate. The team successfully guides Florian through the car portion and manages to open the door, but then Florian falls over. Doesn't look like either of our teams are in the top 10. So the final round of the 2015 DARPA Challenge is wrapping up here in Southern California. And probably in the next hour or so, we're gonna get the final results and see which of these teams is gonna be walking away with $2 million for the top prize at the DARPA Challenge. The first place. DARPA Robotics Challenge Finals from Taejon, South Korea, Team Keist. She's just so stoked. This is a team from South Korea that just won $2 million. But I think it's interesting that a team from the international community, not from the US, just won DARPA's money. So that does it for the DARPA Challenge 2015. You know, there were over 20 other teams who were doing some pretty impressive things, all things considered. But, you know, this is just sort of the beginning of the future of robotics. There's still a long ways to go. Don't have to worry about the robo-apocalypse yet, so sleep safe. <laughs>